Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Hangout with the Devs. Today, we have a special guest with us today. Uh, who that is? Of course. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh, the legendary. Me? Me? My, my <laughs> peer, where am I? Where am I? Am I <laughs> right here? Oh, over there. Yeah. Some, somewhere. I don't know. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's give a little we'll, introduction uh, uh, about who is our who, guest, uh, Matt. So do you mind if you share about yourself? What do you do? Who you are? Let's go. Uh, well, oh, sorry. Uh, well, um, my name is Matt Frank. I am a uh, comic book artist and illustrator uh, based here in Austin, Texas in the good old USA, where it is almost 12 hours difference with the, the uh, folks all the way out in Kuala Lumpur. Um, and uh, yeah, um, and uh, I've worked on the uh, Godzilla franchise for, I think I did the math recently and it was something like 11, 12 years. And I'm just like, oh my God. Um, oh. And um but I've worked on I've worked on Gamera, I've worked on Ultraman, I've I've done a comic based on Red Man, the Kaiju Hunter. I've basically if it's got kaiju or it's kaiju adjacent in some way, I try to get my get my hands into it. <laughs> so so yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for coming, man. It's an honor to work with you. Totally. Right, so let's let's start off with our Giga Dash. So let's start with Melvis. Uh, hi, hi guys, I'm Mel. Uh, I'm the co-director of uh, Gigabash. Uh, this is the first time that we're, we are developing our game, uh, our own game. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're super lucky and super fortunate to have like a bunch of very passionate um, teammates internally and also our fans and our communities has been really, uh, really, really helpful. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been a blast developing this game and, you know, and, and see the players enjoying it and um and really discussing about the game and, and and playing and streaming it so today i'm i'm really happy to have matt frank with us uh uh drawing our 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 characters um yeah and looking forward to to look at him sketch awesome so now let's move on to jack all right so uh, tell us who you are and what you do here of course so hi i'm jack so i'm a game programmer in this for gigabash so technically, Giva Bash also my first game that I made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I hope you guys are, like had the last playing it. Oh, yeah. He he, he coded Wooly, uh, oh, the other okay. inhale mechanics and everything. He coded. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of act responsible for many of the character abilities. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We'll get more into that later. So yep. stay tuned, guys. Uh, and I am Gerald. I'm the narrative designer and writer for Giavesh. So I design all the stories and write all the insane uh, lore. lore. <laughs> so nice. if you enjoy that, uh, thank you very much for enjoying it. <laughs> Yay! So, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get things started. But before that, uh, Matt, I just want to know, where does your love for kaijus come from? Where's my love of kaiju come from? Yeah, how did that start? Um, it's 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 funny because I I think I think a lot of people a lot of kaiju fans when they're younger uh, really like dinosaurs and um, because dinosaurs are like they're like these real life monsters that you'll never get to see but you kind of get to see so you know they're real and then kaiju are sort of the next step past that because uh, I remember it as a kid seeing some Godzilla stuff and thinking. This is like a dinosaur in a city and it's breathing fire and destroying stuff. And um, so uh, that was really where it came from. I think that for a lot of people, it, it, you know, it, everybody, uh, everybody is drawn to different aspects of it. And uh, I, I really think for me, um, the, the creatures were kind of the thing that brought me in. The monsters were things that brought me in, but it was the stories that kept me in, you know? And I, because you can do so much with this genre, even yeah. though people don't do it as much as they should. <laughs> um, 
But I did want to say, I, I really do like the story of Gigabash. I, I like the uh, stories y'all came up with and um, the, the, you played with some tropes and uh, you were doing the things that I want to see more of, which is like, oh, they, they took this thing and they built on it. So they, they, they built on these tropes. So I, I have to, I have to commend you for that. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, as, as a kid, I, I'm also like a dinosaur uh, enjoyer. <laughs> My mm -hmm. favorite is the uh, Velociraptor. Oh, and I've never cool. really seen like a, a, you know, a Velociraptor sort of kaiju sort of in the Godzilla scale until now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. It's it's a da, 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 And I remember as a kid, yeah, go like, the first time when I saw Godzilla, it was like a mind blowing moment. Like, oh, you can do that? You can actually do that with dinosaurs? Like, take the dinosaur idea, do that? Like, oh, wow. Like, atomic breath. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think it's a very. Uh, fascinating thing like all kids are fascinated yeah. with dinosaurs my Dinos kid is fascinated with dinosaurs I don't know why <laughs> every kid has that phase of dinosaurs yeah. uh, giant monsters and stuff and they could just watch you know like YouTube with size comparisons of different dinosaurs and different kaijus all day <laughs> I, I don't know why but it's just oh, yeah. I, I think it speaks to a very uh, primal like thing in us <laughs> Yeah. Human beings, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's why that's, that's why it kind of fascinates us to kind of you know create this this, this game. Um, like most of us have that sort of childhood. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, at different uh, uh, what do you call it? Like at different um, capacity. Like some of us are really fans of it, but yeah. At the very least, everyone's kind of exposed to uh, giant ki giant monsters and kaiju and Godzilla yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah I agree with that, you know. I grow up with Ultraman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There you go. yeah, yeah. Is is uh is uh because I was gonna ask because I wanted to ask you guys a question, um, gr uh you know uh growing up in in I assume you all grew up in Malaysia, um and um and uh, I just I guess I'm just not sure how stuff is distributed there because I have friends who are kaiju fans in other countries uh, all over the world. And it's funny how in America it's pretty easy to get. In Japan, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but in certain countries, like in the UK, for example, it's actually really hard to get this stuff mm. uh, because they don't think there's a market for it. But being in Malaysia and living in Kuala Lumpur and all that, I I don't know what's all available to you guys. Like, do you guys just get everything because you're just closer to Japan physically? <laughs> I think I think it's, it's a little bit of that, right? Yeah. We're, we're pretty influenced by Japanese culture over here. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so we we get access to Japanese media. Western media, everything, everything yeah. uh, very easily in Malaysia. Uh, but the one thing is, when we're kids, when we're watching like Ultraman and Godzilla, it's all localized. It's all like dubbed over. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so it's probably like different uh, in that sense, like the the feeling that we have, like yeah. the uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty easy uh -oh. to get. Like it's pretty common here uh, for Asians or Southeast Asians to kind of like um, Ultraman and Godzilla. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I I I, I like I like hearing that. I think um, I think that was how a lot of Ultraman was actually consumed for a while before we started getting our our fancy Blu-ray and DVD releases just in the last like two years. Mm. Um, but uh, we started getting. Uh, uh, but before that, uh, one of the only ways you could watch Ultraman in English, I believe, was to get the Malaysian dub, which is often dubbed in English. Is that correct? So, sorry, uh, is 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 when Ultraman is dubbed? Is it dubbed into English or is it dubbed oh, into Malay? In Malay, like, in Malay, our national Malay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think yeah. they, they took the Japanese version and then they dubbed it over and they put it on national TV. Uh, right, it was on yeah. RTM, right? National yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, At a certain time, <laughs> seven PM or something. I don't remember. Like, yeah. like a fun mm -hmm. fact. Like, at least for me, my first uh, Ultraman was actually Ultraman Tiga. And because nice. it was dubbed in Malay, I thought exactly Ultraman Tiga was made in Malaysia. You know why? Because the word Tiga means three, three in yeah, Malaysia, yeah. Uh, in Malay. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I remember reading that. I, I when I was a kid, I was like, 
what what and it was like the literally my first exposure to the concept of malaysia <laughs> when i was a kid was like what's the what's what's country is that and because tiga and that's that's really cool i, I like that it's a knockoff version of ultraman like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as malaysian that's we really... couldn't believe that that's like you know like something could be in the language that we're used to yeah so we're yeah. like ultraman tiga that doesn't sound legit so <laughs> <it's knocked off. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. wow <laughs> <laughs> but it is my favorite ultraman <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i um uh you just reminded me of something um doesn't malaysia have its own ultraman is reboot we do, is ultraman right? reboot? Yeah, yeah, reboot. Yeah. yeah yeah that was that was pretty recent yeah from one of yeah. our animation studios uh, here yeah that's really cool i uh, i just i just thought it was really cool that um I, I just thought it was really cool that subaraya kind of started thinking like well let's give other countries their own ultraman and then I thought it was really cool in the web series that they did, uh, Ultra Galaxy Fight, where they were like, okay, well, the Malaysian Ultraman is going to team up with the Australian Ultraman and the American Ultraman with <laughs> with great and powered. And I was like, that's such a cool idea. Like, yeah. hey, the international yeah, yeah. guys are getting together. Like so, even in, well, in our team, we do have like a, we do have an American in the uh, team. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't have an Australian, but we have like a half New Zealand. There. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. I love so now it. that the game is out, uh, Matt, how do you feel about Gigamash? What are your thoughts? I uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed it. I uh, I don't know if you guys uh remember Michael McCants, um. Yeah, from G Fest, but he, uh, you know, he helped you guys set up the Gigabash uh, station at G Fest. Um, I was really busy like all weekend because it's I I had G like Fest. twenty commissions, more than twenty commissions I had to work on, so I didn't sleep a whole lot, and um, I'm working constantly, but I managed to carve out like a couple of hours to go down to the video game room hours. and i got to i got to play gigabash and i'm and i and i remember thinking like oh man it's so colorful and it's so cool and this is an xbox controller i don't know how to use this and uh and it was i don't i don't remember if it was a what what system it was i just remember the controller was weird but we were playing it and uh and i was really enjoying it although i didn't know how any of it worked i'm just like there's just things happening <laughs> but uh then i played the full version for rage select over on RageSelect.com, uh and um we did a, a a two episodes and we had a lot of fun with it uh the uh really uh, i like the feeling of it. the controls were really nice uh i play terribly in the first episode uh because <laughs> it's so hard for me to like it's hard for me to talk and play at the same time which is usually why i'm not the one playing but i you guys you guys did what i want to see uh what I, so okay how do i i gotta reset um because all of us played the godzilla fighting games from pipeworks and we those games are really fun uh, but they do still feel a little restrictive because the Godzilla license has these rules that come with it. Mm. Whereas with something like War of the Monsters, which came out back for the PlayStation 2, you could just go crazy and do whatever you want. And you guys did that, which I'm like here <laughs> for. Like when I grabbed the tank and found out I could fire it at like a gun. I was like, yes, yes, more stuff like this, more stuff like this. So yeah. I, I really, I really enjoyed it and I want more. Like I just, I want, I want more of that game. So here's hoping. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, very happy oh, yeah. to hear that, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the great review, man. <laughs> really appreciate that you enjoyed the game. Well, I, like I said, like I said in the video, I want action figures of all the monsters. Like they're all so cool, and uh, Wooly has to be fuzzy though. 
like oh, the, he's, so, he's here. Here. so so <laughs> that one that's a oh name. yeah yeah he's got to be a plush yeah, yeah. you got to be able to ch chuck him at your friend's head and not uh injure him um <laughs> and yeah. um but yeah um uh i i yeah i really enjoyed it i want to see more games like that awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. all right so uh let's give our audience a little bit of what's gonna happen today oh wow yeah so uh yeah we're just gonna pretty much hang out while matt draws uh some kaijus and specifically giga bash titans oh, I that gave that away in the beginning a little bit right <laughs> yeah whoops yeah <laughs> so uh, uh matt you want to switch your camera yeah, give me a second here. It's going to make everybody a little sick for a minute, but yep, I just no have worries. to because I have to make the adjustments. Yep. So uh, to our fellow uh, audience, uh, please stay tuned until the end. We'll be doing two exclusive uh, giveaways. And the, the giveaways are the two sketches that will be done by Matt. So one has already been done uh, beforehand, before the stream. And then one will be done live right now right before your eyes <laughs> <laughs> so matt uh can you tell us like what yeah. will you be drawing today well um i'm very happy to say that i'm going to be drawing one of my favorite characters from the game which is rawa the uh the, the dragon king Ooh. he's sort of y'all's he's kind of like y'all's godzilla a little bit i had it in the right like spot earlier yeah not godzilla yeah. right Oh, yeah. but um, Not fair, so we kind of wanted to go with, um, I mean, the experience is obviously Naga from like Southeast Asian yeah. Um, dragon. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, those dragons doesn't have legs. It's not bipedal, right? Uh, they right. can fly around and they have like short legs and, uh, and hands. Uh, we did try that version yeah. a little bit, yeah, uh, but it doesn't work as a, doesn't as, work. As a character, as a playable ca character. It's just too it's it's too long it's too <laughs> elongated yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we kind of went with the second obvious choice which is but the lies of inspiration uh or the reptile yeah. trope so yeah so so we end up with rawa well, what i like about rawa is that is he is so unique because um i i learned a lot about uh i learned a lot about um you know, ironically, I learned a lot about Southeast Asian culture and specifically, well, because I've been making so many new friends in Thailand and, and Malaysia and um, Singapore recently, I started uh, learning a little more about the cultures. And um, but it wasn't until I watched a video talking about Raya and the Last Dragon, that Disney movie. Oh, yeah. Where it was like. Here's all the things they could have done differently, but didn't. <laughs> and they showed all these pictures of these sculptures of, of what I guess would be considered a dragon. And I'm like, these are so cool. These are so much cooler than whatever that was they did in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that movie gave us a little bit of a surprise, right? Yeah. I mean, especially the name, like... <laughs> What we named it Rawa and then they named Raya, Raya, but but it's not Rana is not the the name of the dragon, uh, but still right. it gave us a bit of a shock like yeah. the similarities, and there was another movie as well that came out and that that, that has a yeti, oh, uh, oh abominable, the abominable or something yeah, <laughs> and it has a yeti that looks exactly <laughs> like sort of like Wooly, but we already had mm -hmm. Wooly at that time so. We, yeah, it caused a little bit of a panic as well. Like, oh man, can't copyright this. Yeah. Dodge. <laughs> ah, geez, that's that's interesting. The um, uh, what what do what is the what are the dragons of Southeast Asia? I, I imagine every culture has a different name for them. Kind of like in uh, in China and Japan and Korea, they go from Long to Ryong to Ryu. Yeah. What what are dragons called in Malay? Naga, 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 Naga,
uh, being a dragon, it was like a, a flower uh, in Indonesia called mm. Chandrawase. Uh -huh. okay. So Rawa is in the middle of that name. So I kind of plucked that out. I like that, the, the, <laughs> the ring of that name. Yeah. But uh -huh. also, we have an island in Malaysia yes. that's called Pulau Rawa. It, it, it's, it's called a Rawa Island. Rawa Island. Literally. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. sort of like our uh, Taraba Island, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it's a play on words of um, uh, on, on Naga. Um, oh okay. Yeah, I guess that's that's many things. Hmm. And if you if you if you rotate the the the, the W to M, so it becomes Rama. It's sort of like king in 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 uh, Thai culture. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, it's a play on all, all those stuff. Uh, and I felt that you know that kind of felt right. So we just went with that name. Yeah, it yeah. really gave that that really royal sort of kingly, yeah. king, yeah. regal sort yeah. of feel to the name mm. without really explaining much of it. I think yeah. that's really yeah. great. That's a great idea. Yeah. So Jack, yeah. did you work on Rawa? I did work on Rawa. So how what was it like working on Rawa? Like what? Yeah, what was it like? <laughs> uh, it was fun. A, a lot of references. A lot of references. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got references of many things. You know, like dragon breathing fires, and then the you know the that skill that looks like a nuclear blast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I believe that came from. Definitely a legendary. <laughs> a very famous. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was fun to make it, uh, honestly. And um, I, I would say the the most difficult skill for me for that doing Rawa skill for Rawa was the uh, fire breathing skill. Fire breathing, the one like that's channeling, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Correct, you're correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, what, that, why, why is it tough? Why is it hard? Uh, I think the toughest part is like like the optimization part because right. kind of initial the initial design we make it in a way that like it really kills the performance performance <laughs> yeah. but it looks cool <laughs> and then we're trying to figure out the way to make it like run nicely on the uh, I mean, I... Our, our, our platform and at the same time it looks cool guys, it guys look this cool. is this is how it's like on a daily basis yeah. between the programmers <laughs> and the designers it's like we always want some things yeah. that look cool <laughs> and then they'll be like that will kill performance and you know on PS4 <laughs> and four, what if four Rawas you know four players decide to use Rawa and then they're all breathing fire yeah and that would kill performance and we'll always have this kind of discussion yeah, yeah, like yeah. no I want it to look cool no it doesn't work <laughs> we have a negotiation between the yeah, designers so and we have to find a happy medium and yeah. like as, as a writer I'm on the side I'm just like I just like how Rawa's fire literally fries your machine. <laughs> <laughs> like literally fries your machine if you use it too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a um, it's a it's a really beautiful, like just everything about Rawa I think of as being beautiful, because he's almost like this mix of Godzilla and King Ghidorah, because Ghidorah is also a beautiful, kingly, uh, very regal creature. Mm -hmm. And but but in this terrible, horrifying way, um, I once read in a Pacific Rim fan fiction of all places that a character described the kaiju as being beautiful, mm. and uh, another character said, "Oh, like the way a mushroom cloud is beautiful," you well, know, that's, like that's cool. which I think is a really good line. Yeah, that's a really good perspective um, to yeah. to look at kaiju. Yeah. But Gorgon is, is beautiful. <laughs> in his own way, yeah. Yeah, in his own way, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, we could not, when we were playing uh, the game on for Rage Select, we could not get over how incredibly silly Gorgon was, and yet we loved him for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the bridge that we, when we started uh, designing Gorgon or, or you know characters in the beginning. We were going for we were asking our concept artists to specifically go for the you know the the sort of like the the silly look of the old Ultraman um, kaiju's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, we ask our and it's actually a pretty hard thing to do for our concept artists. They're like they're so used to drawing cool cool things. We are asking yeah. to draw things that kind of you know they'll go go retro and go. Look a little bit silly and a bit dumb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that 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 was fun, really fun and really eye opening for them to kind of you know like go into the minds of the, the designers back then. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and and turns out like Gorgong is just this silly looking you know like fish type, 
monster that <laughs> we, all, we all fell in love with like okay then yeah that's our poster boy we're yeah, gonna yeah, go yeah. with him <laughs> yeah he's a uh, and that's that's something that i remembered uh my co-host jeff saying where he was like i can't take this guy seriously he's so silly looking and i said i don't think we're supposed to yeah. <laughs> like silly, like yeah. so many so many times I remembered people saying like uh, uh, with the old kaiju movies or people who, you know, don't like kaiju movies and don't watch kaiju movies. And then they'll say like, well, why is this thing supposed to be scary? I don't understand. And I often tell them like, well, no, <laughs> like a lot of times it's not supposed to be scary. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. 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 One, one, one point is that we kind of want that first few characters that we revealed kind of set the tone of the game yeah like our, the tone of our game is not like you know big scary monster well it's sort of using a theme but it's fun you know like first and, first and foremost so so yeah so gong has to look fun has to look like kind of silly and but then it's also kind of a callback to those uh you know the childhood uh kaijus yeah, yeah. so that's kind of yeah, totally. that's kind of the reason why uh, Gorgon looks a little bit more silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But our idea is also kind of to give him a bit of range. Like we have, for example, Rawa that looks a little bit more like cooler. Cooler, cooler yeah. Uh, yeah, mm. and mysterious characters like, like Ziva. Um, yeah, so we mm. kind of have like the, the cute one as well, like Yeti. So we won't, like, sorry, Wooly. Uh, so we have like a, a whole gamut oh. of uh, different types of uh, characters yeah. for players to choose from. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking I about really... like a wide range of like a huge roster of characters, okay, who's your favorite uh Giga Dash character, Matt? Oh boy. Um, you know, I really, I really like Rawa. Rawa is really unique. Uh, it is kind of like asking to choose between my children because I, I love all, I love all monsters for different reasons. Um, but uh. You know, then it comes down to like, like, like Rohana is really cool. I love the, I love Rohana's design and her cons, the, the, the way she looks, the way she moves. Uh, and then, uh, but when you guys announced Skorak, I was like, oh, he's delightful. I love him. <laughs> um, and then, and then you guys did Concrete and I was just like, all right, I think it might have to be this one. Um <laughs> <laughs> so, so it is. It, it, uh, I I I I don't know. I I really truly can't choose, but those are like my top four. I think um, it's really hard to choose. If I had to choose one, I think I'd probably go with Rawa, just because I love that design. Um, but uh, it is funny. Uh, I I was working with uh, uh, I won't say which one it is, but. I was working with a writer and an artist on a project uh, about a year or two ago, or it was like, it was before concrete was revealed. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, it was actually, no, it was before a couple of different characters were revealed. It was before it was, it was really early in the process. And then you guys were, uh, were revealing certain characters. And I was, and then uh, uh, me and this other team were like, we were watching y'all reveal characters, and then y'all revealed some that were very similar to the characters that we were developing, <laughs> and we were like, ah, oh, crap! Now we gotta change it. <laughs> oh, no. no, but I mean, there, there's no, there's no like premium on kaiju as long as you yeah. can like, I, I say you can make kaiju that are like other kaiju. You just gotta find the right twist, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I'd have to go with Rawa. I just, I love that design. All right. So it's official. Matt is, Matt's top kai, kai, kaiju is Rawa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah move you? over, Gamera. Um, <laughs> the king, like, people, the dragon people king has you, come like, are... to claim his place. <laughs> All right. So Mel, who's your favorite character? Uh... So uh, it's it's like uh, so, so in terms of design um, or how it looks, uh, obviously it's Rawa. Uh, mm. That guy just looks so cool. Uh, sorry, go take that. I'll take that back. In terms of playing it, I play Rawa the the most, uh, at mm -hmm. least for now. Um, I just mm. like his, you know, like very powerful 
the attacks as he's more of a brawler type, yep. uh, heavy hitter, a uh, bit slower on the, uh, on, the, on the movement, but that works for me. Uh, but on a design or, you know, as a character, as a design, Concrete is my choice. <laughs> yeah, nice. I kind of said that a long time ago during an, another interview that my one of my favorite characters is like yet to be revealed. It's actually Concrete. Uh, it's just it's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we awesome. I mean, it started out as a joke internally. Like, okay, <laughs> what's what's with all the buildings? That I guess is destroyed during yeah. all the kaiju fight, right? Like, what if what if they 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 kind of fight back? You know, they fight back. <laughs> Yeah. So that kind of we, we we had that discussion going on as a joke in the beginning, and then and then we're like, why don't we just do it? Yeah, because do we it. have no restrictions, yeah, no yeah, one's yeah, stopping yeah. us doing it. Yeah. So, <laughs> like you said, right? Like we're not tied to any any license or anything. So why not just do it? Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. Nice. So so we came out with concrete, and we just you know developed it, and it's just it's just hilarious looking at it. Uh, and then and then our enemy just took it. Our, our character designers, our character like skill skill guys, like took it further with the yeah. with the ultimate attack, like <laughs> slapping people. That's just so much fun. It's just hilarious. So yeah, I love concrete <laughs> about the ultimate. It actually, it's a reference from like Malaysian thing. What what? It's a Malaysian it's thing. Re- yeah. yeah. What reference is that? Uh, you know we have a sleeper. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> and and, and we when we see cockroaches, we always slap them with a sleeper. <laughs> Yeah, so, it's just the slapping motion is yeah, fun. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that that's where the inspiration come, came from. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not. It's just not. Wait. Like... Oh, okay. Wait. No. I I want to hear more about this. What What is this you're talking about? <laughs> so <laughs> what is the Malaysian thing? So in like Southeast Asia, there's a lot of like not not a lot of but you know in in, in normal households you probably have like cockroaches, right? And in uh-huh. Asian oh, culture, okay. we have we we wear like sandal slippers sandal. a lot. Yeah. So, so we slap. You, what we usually do is we, we kill cockroaches oh my God. with sl- sandals or slippers. Slippers or sandals. It. I think that's, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like um, so it's kind of a, a good like perspective. Like you as a kaiju killing like something puny and small, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah so we found that maybe fun or like <laughs> uh, cathartic. So we put that into the game, I guess. <laughs> And there's like, that's really... like the, the other side of it is actually like the you know the angry Asian mom where and then your kid <laughs> fails the exam oh my goodness. and the mom takes the slipper to slap the kid. <laughs> How dare you wow. not get an A as an Asian and <laughs> just slap the hell out of the kid? <laughs> that's well, that's really that's really funny because in um I was born and raised in San Antonio, um, and uh, San Antonio is uh, in, in, here in Texas. And uh, but so growing up, I was very often like the only white guy in my in my all my friends groups because like San Antonio has like a sixty to seventy percent uh, Mexican American population, oh. uh-huh. and uh, yeah, so it's um it has a really unique culture un- unto itself. But of course, a lot of that comes from Mexican culture. And uh, the uh, my Mex my 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 Hispanic friends, my Mexican American friends, growing up, they had the same thing. It's the chancla. It's the it's the 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 sandal that your mom or your grandma whaps you with uh, <laughs> when you're being belligerent. So that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, well, um, kind of like how it's like developing a lot of the characters in house. Yeah. Like we, we, uh-huh. we, it, it's. It all started with jokes and you know just kidding around, yeah. and joking around, and then it suddenly just sticks. Yeah, now it's yeah. a thing wow. with it. <laughs> yeah, thing now. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Thing. It might not be the official reason. Uh, from like different uh, people have different reasons <laughs> yeah, why yeah, they yeah. want to implement that thing, but but yeah, it, it very well could be because of that cockroach thing. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's yeah. really funny. Um, cool, cool. I love it. Yeah. So so what about Jack? What's like who's your favorite? Uh, I will start with the more of a biased opinion for myself. First. All right, let's like, go. Like, uh, for me, this guy, this, oh, this yeah. boy here is yay mine. That's, that's the first thing you did. Like, yeah, that's the first got... because this is the first thing I did when I joined Fashion Republic. Yeah, so I have a lot of love for him, <laughs> even though he has a lot of ridiculous <laughs> skills that kill my brains. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 but when it comes to gameplay, 
uh, when okay, imagine if I'm gonna go for a competition or what, or fighting for seriousness, uh, I would go with Scora. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the reason for that is because Scora has like, uh, I like the playstyle of it because you can switch between two variation of playstyle: the one mm. without shell, another one with a shell. Mm. And then I like the the strategy part of Scora. Mm. It's very satisfying when you manage to trick your friend using mm. a shell, <laughs> and then manage to hit them. It's more like, technical. Yeah, yeah, very technical. Like, yeah. like, like, like it, it feel very satisfying. So that, that's why I, I guess like it's, it's more like you like to hang back and just watch people fight and uh, yeah, yeah, lock <laughs> things at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's not the reason why I like Scora. Wow, well, coming back to Ruli, yeah, he's cute. So. How can I? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the thing about Skorok is that the, the shell in certain maps, like let's say uh Tarabak, like it sort of blends into the back to the to the floor. So it's sort of like it's like you're planting right? a hidden C4 or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> can be all sneaky about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's one of the reasons why I love playing I love playing him. Like 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 yeah. Because it's like <laughs> it's all about like getting satisfied or Hitting, I mean, like, uh, damaging your it's opponent. Sneaky, yeah, right? sneaky. When, when we're designing the character, the, the play style is meant to be like sneaky, tactical, it's more technical. Yeah. Uh, kind of character. It's supposed to be a little bit hard, uh, a bit harder to play with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it kind of did that job, right? I mean, yeah, yeah that's, that's the reason why you like. like yeah, 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 yeah. So, did you work on Score Up as well? Yeah, I did work on Score Up. I think I like think almost... after Wooly, the yeah, after... things. From you, yeah, no, no, I mean, not only not... from me, there are the, I mean, some of my other teammates. I think we have like almost like three person working on the abilities. Mm, yeah, I think everybody like contributed, contributed to every character, to every character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, nice. well, what, what was the challenging part about score up? Uh, the shell itself. The shell itself. <laughs> yeah. Well, what what's what's hard about it? Oh, because like um, as a as a player, I just see it as like an item, and then I can grab it and throw it, and it explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I is mean, the problem. That is the problem. <laughs> like, it it is the only characters like have like a like a it, 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 like a second entity. He's like he has a like a children with himself. I mean, I mean, uh, that attached to him all the time. Mm -hmm. So managing the shell like at being attached to it and not being attached to it. Was a very tricky part. I mean, when it comes to te technically, the technical term is yeah. quite tricky. Mm, yeah. yeah, and even in the story as well, like that that sort of uh, dual entity is also incorporated into the story. Yeah. So, uh, like like the skull is actually well, if you uh, spoiler alert, time to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you guys have read the lore. Uh, the skull is not actually Skorak's skull, but sort of like uh liberated it from a certain someone <laughs> and then made it his own <laughs> oh no and there's like this, this uh duality within his uh being yeah and yeah. that's yep that's that's yeah that's that, the yeah. tough part right i mean that created a lot of problems in production because <laughs> yeah. when it's a character but it's also not you know the the, the part that you control uh but you control it sometimes. Yeah, you control it sometimes. And then somebody else can steal it and yep. you know walk away in it. And then when that happens, we have to make sure that you can't, you know, you call can't it use back. the yeah shell. Um, and then, then then it comes to Wooly. Wooly can inhale it, and then yeah. you know people can pick it up, throw it, chuck it at, <laughs> chuck it back at you, and you need to get damaged by it. Yeah. <laughs> so and... a lot of problems that kind of spawn be because of that. And the funny thing is, I did score up right after Wooly. Oh. Yeah. So both of them has the I can say the most challenging ability to develop. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the combination of these combination. Um, these characters that kind of complicates things. Yeah. Initially, but that's where it's yeah. it's kind of fun, right? That's yeah. that's how it generates a lot of like unexpected or crazy moments um, mm. in game. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's fun to make, uh, But yeah. But yeah. It's, 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 uh, it, 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 it was quite challenging. Like honestly, my my favorite like character yeah. to play is yeah. also Skorak. Oh nice. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm yeah. also a Skorak. <laughs> oh hell! Oh, oh my dear overlord! <laughs> no! <laughs> like I yeah, I, I just really like his sort of tactical nature behind him. Yeah. Like he's sort of like a snake from uh, Smash Bros. I mean he's from Metal Gear, but Smash in Smash Bros. But you can sort of put yeah. put like C4 everywhere and ah, put traps. 
yeah, and sort of like corner your foes into like a really uh, bad position. Yeah. And yeah, I just really like doing that. And uh, I remember uh, I, I went on, uh, uh, I went online. Yep. Like during like during the game's launch, and like there's this guy who's playing as Giga Man, and I'm playing as Skorak, and I'm just like, bruh, you're gonna you're gonna get some skull, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, oh, if you are that Giga Man uh, who got wrecked uh, in like thirty seconds, uh, sorry about that, but I had ah. gotta do it to him, man. <laughs> That's <laughs> gotta, awesome. gotta show it some yeah. Skorak yeah, yeah. <laughs> dominance out there. <laughs> but awesome. like my my favorite like character as a character, I would yeah. say it's uh it's a it's a tough choice. I I I want to say Thunder Tross because personally I'm kind of like a Gundam mecha. geek. Oh, and yeah. a mech, yeah, pretty much mm-hmm. like a mecha fan fanboy. Yeah. But I I I can't like like I have to say Giga Man. Yeah. <laughs> and today it's Giga Man yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> I like Giga Man a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's like what do you call that? It's it's like the the retired or like divorced father. Yeah. Is it divorced? <laughs> it's not, that's not canon. That's, that's not canon. <laughs> Don't put words in Don't put random words in now. <laughs> oh man. Oh no. <laughs> he he exists really... the vibe of like the divorced father like on the way, like trying to rediscover himself. Yeah. yeah. Sort of like uh, Peter Parker in in a spider, uh, into the spider, yeah. into the spider yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and like he's just yeah. like eating his burger. Like I imagine Gigaman eating like his ramen and enjoying yeah. it. Like oh, this is you know back in the days. <laughs> this was this was my one of my favorites sort of thing. Yeah, and he has like yeah, he has a lot of character, like a lot of personality, sort of in his uh animation. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the way he the mm-hmm. way he attacks like usually like you imagine him to attack like his basic attack to be punches yeah but it's actually like a like a chop chop, chop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and i like how that's sort of like a callback to certain like scenes in ultraman where like the mm-hmm. monster is like pretty like up close and he opts for like a chop, chop. like a chop. Chop. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then like sparks mm. starts flying yeah. it's more it's more uh it's, it's it's about the showmanship, right? Yeah, like, yeah, it has to yeah, yeah. it has to be flashy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. like a lot of moves, like he's just being a showman. Like yeah. you can show off, show off. Yeah, yeah showing off. <laughs> he's like cool Yeah, I think I just. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think I once described uh, Giga Man to a uh, to a friend as like. He's kind of like if Mr. Incredible was oh. Ultraman, like <laughs> midlife crisis Ultraman, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, like, yeah, sort of, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just a very, uh, you know, I, I like, I have a, a lot of fondness for that character too. And I like his, I like the role he plays in Thundertross's story because, you know, this idea of like he's, he's kind of looking out for, uh what what's the kid's name is it shuji or uh, what's it yuki yuki yeah he he's kind of he's kind of looking out for the kid and uh and i and i really like that role because i was kind of expecting him to be a bit a bit more full of himself and a bit more uh a bit more kind of arrogant and a little bit like back in my day but he's actually like really supportive and very uh and very kind and i really liked that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah do you, like, do you have any stop? Lore expectation yeah. at yeah, all? why you yeah. write write him that way? Yeah. Like, how how do I do this without giving out too much? Of oh yeah, the lore. <laughs> mm. Yeah, like like for me when I wrote Giga Man, uh, I I feel like he maybe at some point this is not canon yet, or not canon. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not even yet. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. Yeah. Yeah, like I imagine him like like from all that sportsmanship, he he might have been like a pretty sort of arrogant and sort of cocky oh, guy in, in the, the past. Day, maybe, yeah. But you know, maybe mm. something happened and then something made him sort of a bit more uh, softer. softer yeah. yeah. Something happened in his life that made him change. And I imagine like, you know, a, a hero who is sort of more experienced. And uh, yeah, more experience in general, 
would have grown wiser. Yeah. Maybe he sees he's seen yeah. everything. Yeah, he's right. seen he's seen it all. And maybe he sees like uh Yuki as like the new upcoming hero. Maybe he sees that, you know, Yuki might have made or is making certain mistakes that he has made in the past. Mm-hmm. Maybe he wants mm. to guide Yuki to the, you know, a better version of himself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe that's why he's he's uh you know he's he's trying his best to make Yuki, you know, sort of inherit his mantle of being a hero, oh, wow. maybe. Nice. But I don't want to make that official. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, Gigamen was, like, Thunder Trust was really hard to, at the storyline for Thunder Trust is actually really hard to write. I think I wrote about 200 drafts of Thunder wow. Trust just to get the story down right. Because we only have like, we only have enough budget for like five levels, and mm-hmm. to how much uh, story and character and emotion can, it, yeah. right? can I sort of cramp in? Yeah. yeah, and at at the same time, I want like Giga Man to be part of the story as well. Yeah, I want them to have like a what uh, a mentor and student kind, kind of, of relationship. relationship yeah. Like. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, one, one funny thing yeah. about Gigaman's uh, design is that like a lot of people ask us or are fascinated why we pick the kind of dead bod, dead bod. <laughs> design. Uh, I think that, that's a it's a funny story. Like it can, it, it kind of came naturally because in the beginning he wasn't that. I believe we kind of talked about that um, that we wanted to like find something like make him a little bit special, like different from all the other uh, like giant heroes. Um, out there, uh, I mean, we talked about you know making him. What if we make him like you know retired and stuff? But we never really went with it mm. until we put it in game and we find that if we would not, if we don't make him a little bit like wider, like a bit more wide, you, you won't be able to see him in game. He's just too thin, you know, as a <laughs> yeah. as a ah. as a playable character from yeah. from top view. So that kind of cemented the idea. Like then. It kind of gave us the confidence that okay, we should go one hundred percent on the uh, on the dead bot <laughs> idea and, and just go with it because it works in game and it works as a as a you know as a uniqueness and then we can work that in on the lore. Yeah, uh, it gives it a bit of uh, personality as well, uh, mm. a bit of charm, and us ourselves we have that bot so <laughs> kind, of, <No. laughs> kind of relatable I guess. <laughs> so so yeah, so that's that's kind of like a funny story how how it came to be, yeah. Yeah. Like, I like that a lot. About... I yeah. It, it's just it just goes to show you that if you take a you can take a, a an old a trope you know an old a, a character trope like especially something like that's been done as many times as the giant hero and you can still kind of find a new way to 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 approach it. You can find like a a fresh way to approach it, and if you can, just run with it. Like yeah. just 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 go for it. Yeah, in the end of the day, we're just having fun, you know, yeah. like creating this, yeah. this this project. Yeah. So, so Matt, since you are drawing yep. Rawa and you've been like a veteran in drawing Godzilla, who's more challenging mm-hmm. to draw, Rawa or Godzilla? I'm gonna say Rawa, um, because, <laughs> well, because I just um, uh, I mean God, I mean between God, uh, Godzilla at this point is a character that I can practically draw in my sleep. Like. I've, I've, I've drawn him so many times and I've been drawing him for so long that, I mean, that's not to say that I don't try to challenge myself or try to push myself when I draw him. Uh, but Rawa, again, like his design is so unique for compared to a lot of other kaiju. And it's, and the intricacies of this beautiful, these, this, this golden, uh, coloration, this, uh, this kind of armor, the sculpted armor on his body uh it's it is very challenging because i've been sitting here kind of fussing with the details being like no wait that doesn't line up no oh uh and eventually i have to be like we're gonna be here for three hours if i don't like move forward on the (laughs) on the art um but no i and but i love that again i just i love the uh the complexity of it because it is something that is so different Mm, cool glad 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 that that we made like a mark on the not Zilla trope <laughs> within the kaiju community. Oh yeah. 
Well, well, yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. Like, the Notzilla is kind of... Everybody has their, you know, Notzilla. Yeah. And I think it's a question of how far you want to push it. Because everybody wants, like, a big reptilian monster. I think I remember talking to someone when Gigabash was announced, and I think it was before I ever talked to you guys, um, we were talking about it, and, like, a person, uh, a person I was talking to said, like, yeah, it looks cool, but I really hope they have, like, a big reptile monster, you know? And I'm like, a Notzilla. Well, that's what you want. Yeah. And I've kind of re resisted that myself in the past because it's such a trope now. But if you can find, again, if you spin on it, like, some of the best kaiju ever made are kind of Notzillas, like Gamera was a was a notzilla <laughs> was a monster that they just kind of were like well we want something like godzilla but we don't want to make something too much like godzilla so we'll make it a turtle <laughs> and uh <laughs> and it kind of went and it kind of became developed. its own troll in the end right yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the giant turtle like became its own thing after yeah. that so yeah, like, and i mean i like i can't talk too much about it but i'm kind of developing my own thing and one of the biggest things from the start was, okay, this isn't just going to be me f trying to find a Godzilla. Like, I need to, I need to find something a little different. I need to find a, a, some spins on stuff. So, yeah, it's a, it's challenging. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And like, just a quick reminder to our audience uh, who just uh, hopped on board, we are actually doing a, we're actually doing two exclusive giveaways. So please stay tuned until the end. So the two giveaways will be the sketches that Matt is Matt has done. Uh, sorry, one has been done before the stream, and one he's actually doing right now. It's the Rawa sketch you are seeing on screen right now, and it will be available for giveaway at the end of the stream. So please stay tuned until the end. Yep. So now back after that ad drop. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Mel, since like we've been talking about Giavesh so much, mm -hmm. can you give us a little backstory? Of on, what? Of how Gigabash started. Oh man. Oh, it, this discussion was meant for CERN, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it can fall and, uh, to me. And uh, before that, uh, I gotta go for a quick toilet break. So sorry guys. Uh, so please go I, on. Should I continue? Yep, please yeah, go on. Uh, no. The question was, uh, how did Gigabash oh, start? Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was kind of random. I mean, so internally, <laughs> we have been discussing uh that we we want to you know before this all started we, we want to create our own game right that that's the that's kind of the inception of the, this whole thing and then we were talking about like what should we do uh, what should we do as a uh, as a as our theme or as a, as the idea of the game um and it was just random a few random discussions between cern and i and another colleague of mine uh, we were talking about I think Monster Hunter came out uh, back then. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 was it was it World? Once Monster Hunter World, I don't remember. But some last... Monster Hunter came out. Yeah, and then yeah. we were pretty obsessed with that for a while. Uh, and then we were discussing about like our childhood and stuff, and you know what, what we should do. Um, and it just came naturally. We were just discussing about. And then another thing is that we've been playing a lot of uh, Smash as well in games. Smash, Smash Brothers. Uh, in in office, sorry, yeah. so so yeah, so we were discussing like oh we should make something fun, uh, first first and foremost. So that that was sort of our um initial idea, initial goal, and then and then we also liked uh kaiju stuff on all of. We want to find something that all of us can relate to as 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 a developer, yeah. um like so all our developers have different backgrounds, but all of us I think have the similar, um. Uh, similar interest or similar kind of childhood in in exposure, sorry, exposure to to like kaiju stuff like Godzilla and Ultraman. So, what if we do like a like a like a like a what do you call it like a like a mashup of you know kaiju's and all our childhood kind of giant heroes, you know, like mechas even. Um, Joke characters, even <laughs> like Godzilla, obviously, and Ultraman, and and all this kind of stuff. We just want to like do a mashup, and that naturally became a, sort of like a fighting game mechanic. 
uh, type of game. So yeah, so that's kind of how it happened. It happened quite organically, I would say. Um, a lot of influences coming from the team members as we as we go along. Um, fun fact: it wasn't a top-down isometric game in the beginning. Uh, we first prototyped prototyped the game as a third-person third-person kind of kaiju game, uh, but it just wasn't really fun. Yeah. So mm. because we find that our we'll, the camera will always be obstructed by by buildings and you know like it's a, it's a little bit wonky, and you have to kind of fight with the camera controls on your right stick and stuff. And uh, we still have that prototype you know somewhere in servers, but but yeah we found that found that not really fun and not really easy to pick up. And it's not easy to find the opponent to. Yeah, yeah, and you'll constantly lose your opponent. Like you don't know where they are, and like it's more about finding where they are than. You know the actual clashes, so so then we kind of angled it. We kind of changed up the camera angle and kind of tested uh, more of an isometric, more of a top-down camera view, oh. and it worked well. It, the the fights became more intense and it became more fun and you know like more unexpected things happen. Yeah. And we just stick with it and we just continue developing in that in that direction. Yeah, yeah. it was an experiment for a while. It was an experiment. We were just testing it. You know, on the side, and then that is much more successful in, in our in our internal play test than the original uh, third person one. Yeah, uh, in in the things that we wanna focus on, obviously there are games that you know kind of work in a third person yeah. uh, camera. But what we're going for is from the get go, we wanna create something that that is playable with four players. You know, like on couch play, that good old days, you play with your friends. Um, and then that that was our goal. So yeah. having four players in a third person cam camera, it just doesn't. We had split screen. Split screen some more, yeah. It doesn't really work. Yeah, it's well. pretty, it's pretty small. I remember like playing the first version yeah, of that. It's, it's pretty it's small and too tiny. Yeah. The screen. Like it's sort of becoming like a like you have to be. You have to be able to afford a big enough screen yeah. <laughs> to be able to like enjoy the game yeah. in a in a yeah, split. All screen. have good eyesight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So so that's kind of the reason, yeah. It's kind of the beginning, um, and then we just swapped over the to top down, and then um, yeah, and COVID hits, and the four player couch play thing uh, <laughs> doesn't really work well anymore. So it's kind of unfortunate, but we we stuck with it, you know. Um, kind of pivot that a little bit onto online, and we tried our best to do an online version. Uh, uh, but yeah, that that's where we end up uh, with our current product. Yeah. Like I remember, online mode was was a pretty big decision for us, right? Yeah, like, yeah it was. Um, and granted, we were kind of we, we we couldn't see an end to this pandemic, so so that's kind of that kind of pushed us to uh, to go towards online. Um, it wasn't for a very long like for the longest time. It wasn't in our plans to do online uh, mode. Uh, so that's why it kind of took a bit longer than expected to release yeah. the game. Uh, it's it's due to mm. a lot of things needed to be changed, um, in order to make it work. Uh, in online play, yeah. Yeah, like I remember, like we were discussing, like oh, if what what if players want to play this with their friends, and you know, we we really, really wanted people to enjoy the game, yeah. like with as much convenience as possible. Yeah. Like you know, it's just a single button click, and then you get to enjoy it with your friends online. Uh, without doing you know all the you know, doing our best to not go through like all the crazy loopholes yeah. you know, through like uh what was the 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 parsec parsec yeah parsec, remote yeah, play parsec, and stuff we've been play. using that you know throughout the pandemic to to test, play test our play game test and stuff, our yeah. yeah and it's still playable you know you can still use parsec to play uh, mayhem mode um since that's just a co-op uh, specific mode. Um, yeah, or, or Steam Remote Play or um, Share Play on PS. But yeah, we want to have a better experience, so hmm. um, the actual online is a better way to go the time we... hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, so like, I've got, I have a question for Jack. Yeah. Uh, since you came in as a fresh graduate, right? Yeah. Like, straight out of college. Yep. Well, what was it like developing like Gigabash as your first project. Like Gigabash is a pretty ambitious game. Um yeah, I mean initially of course when I just first joined, the first thing I was like feel would be like I mean not much confidence. Like am I up to the past to do everything? Especially when I joined just like, hey, 
you sure uh, it's just like hey let's do the character you're gonna do the character's ability <laughs> i was like whoa what that is the main thing of the game and <laughs> i have to do that and it was kind of scary in the beginning but i mean but as time goes i'm just very glad that i have like a group of like very like helpful teammates that guided me along the way and as time goes i things i mean it, it got easier for me to develop and then i i just also glad that they also give me the opportunity to like provide my own input on the the ability designs mm. yeah so um i mean i would say it it was a bit of there, there's a bit of challenges in the beginning but as time goes it's become like a very very fun uh journey for me to develop others abilities for the characters oh so it was i would say overall it's a fun ride <laughs> yeah for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> i need to to make one of the most uh lo- lovable or like yeah. beloved characters as your first like that's an incredible achievement <laughs> like career <laughs> achievement i'd say yeah yeah i was yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm i'm very grateful for the opportunity they're giving me yeah yeah so yeah i would say i'm pretty lucky for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like if like i've got a question for matt like if yeah. you could design a character for gigabash like what would oh, he wow. look like what what would oh he crap um, oh. Would it be? Yeah. oh this is so oh this is so sudden um <laughs> putting you on a spot <laughs> um yeah um it's 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 really tough because it's um i don't know giant crab um no just kidding um actually giant enemy crab <laughs> so so like I mean that's one of the things that's kind of fun like i said earlier is you take a you can take a trope and even y'all just putting it through a cultural lens you took kind of the notzilla trope and just through y'all's cultural lens you you made something really unique um as a white guy coming in and being like oh well hmm let me think um i uh i you know it it would take i would have to really think about it because you guys, because I can't, I can't just think about like something that looks cool. It also has to be something that um, is functional. You know, uh, I, I would have to consider gameplay as well, because you know, y'all um, with Scorak, you know, Scorak is a is a is a really unique idea for a monster, and it, and it, that idea also really affects how he is played. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Um, I mean. <laughs> The easiest thing to do is to go look at the archetypes that you guys have already covered and do something y'all haven't done yet. Right. Um, there's a couple of ideas. Like, I think Skorak might be the only, like, giant invertebrate you guys have. I, I think um, you actually don't really have any other, like, giant bugs or anything. Yeah. Not that I can think of. Yeah. I mean, um, is technically an invertebrate, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> technically yeah speaking. and, and, and insect, i guess right? yeah. yeah you could also say uh ziva i think that's how you pronounce it um is yeah. like doesn't have bones so <laughs> um it's kind of a golem um so yeah you know there could be something interesting done with uh with another invertebrate there could be um a monster that's more directly tied to the story of another monster. Like, what if Rawa had a rival like thousands of years ago? Something that's Ooh. as powerful as he is. Mm. Um, ooh, sort of a monster queen to kind of challenge the monster king. Ooh. Okay, my brain's starting to fire on all cylinders now. Um, <laughs> Go. It's like. It's like I better shut up before I uh, I can get a contract in front of these guys. Uh, okay, hold on, I have an NDA over here somewhere. Um, just, <laughs> no, um, there's a couple of different ideas. Uh, man, yeah. Okay, now Matt's thinking. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to really think about it. But there's definitely ideas. All right, it's great to hear. <laughs> got a lot of shows we got. We want to explore as well. Down the mm. Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll see about we'll see how what it. comes up um, next. See what shakes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> by the way, it, by it, the, way, it, the it, sketch is audio... looking really good. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank really, you. Good. I'm glad it doesn't really like look like crap. Um, the uh, <laughs> no, I um, the, uh, there's always a. Uh, I'm sure you guys know the term imposter syndrome. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every anybody who's in like a creative field feels that all the time. 
or they felt it to a certain extent. And uh, I remembered uh, talking about it um, on, a, on a friend's Facebook page because I think she was talking about like how, oh man, you know, I feel like I'm a, I feel like this, I feel like I'm a fraud sometimes because I want to be I'm an artist, but, and I, and I was like, oh yeah, I feel that all the time. You know, you, you mm -hmm. feel like you're, you have imposter syndrome. And she was like, she messaged me and was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I had no idea this is something other people dealt with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty common so, actually yeah, in, in all creative fields. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I first learned about it from uh, Neil Gaiman or Gaiman, however you say mm -hmm. that. Uh, Sandman. who does uh you know sandman yeah and um and his him talking about imposter syndrome made me think like oh my gosh this is something that it, it really is something that like I, i'm not alone on <laughs> so but, but i appreciate it you know I, I i will say one thing i know my way around a lizard um <laughs> i will take that um but yeah um yeah, I'm I'm uh I'm really loving how this is coming out and I'm trying to I see we're already we've already kind of blown past the hour mark, so I'm gonna try to pick up the slack a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. <laughs> Just take your time. Me mean meanwhile everybody watching is like, oh give it to me. <laughs> give it to me now. <laughs> what is drawing? That's that's why that's why they 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 started doing those AI programs for people who don't want to wait for art to get done. Oh yeah. yeah! Have you played around with uh, it? Yeah. You have? Yeah. I haven't. I, but I saw like crazy, crazy detailed artworks. I remember seeing it on Twitter, and I'm like, "Wow, this artist is really talented. really good, right?" Wow, and... there's like different <laughs> art styles, and oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I need to. I need That's... to like mess around with it sometimes. I think that if you, I think it's an interesting tool if you want to like quickly get an idea down yeah, right. before you stuff, refine right? it. Yeah. But if but the problem is is that I know a bunch of companies are gonna see that and say, oh, we don't have to hire artists anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty so, cash money of them. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I remember I saw a a a, a, t a post from a, a friend, another artist I know. He kind of got into it with one of the uh, some guy on a on an AI um, Discord. He kind of got into it with him, and he was like. Well, I just, you know, it's also kind of aping very specific art styles and I don't know how ethical that is. And the guy kind of counter, countered the, on the, the guy from the AI Discord countered by saying like, well, artists are just inherently selfish for keeping these skills to themselves. <laughs> wow, and I'm what just kind like, of argument is that? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm just like, oh yeah, okay. We uh, for it, right? <laughs> Like okay, but it's it's like I, I but I worked really hard. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't like college tuition, guys. Like <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, um, yeah. So, I am. Uh, I am. Go ahead. Yeah. So so this is just another reminder to all our audiences. Uh, if you are if you just hopped on board, uh, we have an exclusive giveaway later down when the stream uh near the end of the stream. So one of the giveaways is the one you are seeing Matt draw right now, the awesome king, the drag, the awesome dragon king, Rawa, and as well as another surprise sketch mm. that will be revealed later on. Oh. So please stay until the end of the stream. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. So I have a right. question for Mel. Uh, mm. What's your favorite thing about uh, developing Gigabash? Oh, it's definitely with uh, working, be able to work with a team of very talented and very fun teammates, you know, brainstorming ideas. In the beginning phases of uh, developing Gigabash, it was, it was like ideas and, you know, brainstorms, like sessions like these, and we just talk about, yeah. just sit around, talk about, we say like oh. bullshit about things, and, <laughs> and it will just become a thing become on a its thing, own, yeah. and then you will just realize, <laughs> you know, that's, that's where it's the most fun for me. Uh, like seeing things kind of gel and seeing team members kind of work together across departments. So, you know, like yeah. the animators will have their ideas and then uh, the designers will come up with, we, we look at the design, uh, we look at, look yeah. at the concept, you know, and then 
think up of like crazy moves that kind of complements the design. Yeah. And then the animators will kind of work that in and make it even more awesome, put in references here and there. Um, um, yeah, like, you know, like the, like the, like the Godzilla dance um, yeah. reference that we put <laughs> into, our, into our taunts. That was purely, you know, out, out of a few conversations and our enemies just, just yeah. be like, just, just do it, it just you do know, it. Just, just put it in. Hopefully we won't run into any legal problems. <laughs> we just went with it. You know, like, like things like that, it's just very natural. It's just very uh, fluid, the discussions. Uh, that's where I find it, you know, the most fun, the most uh, rewarding. Working with a bunch of teammates, you know, yeah. we're always like trying to 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 put in like a lot of references, and we are just like, let's try it. You know, like how far can we push this legally? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how how far can we have fun and still like yeah. be like? But but then that is the first stage, right? And then, yeah. then and then we have to think about like okay, now things are getting serious. It's not just fun and games yeah. anymore. Yeah. We're we're kind of putting this out as a game, yeah. as a product. So. So then we're thinking like, okay, so these characters, they're basically, or they're, you know, they're basically homages or, or kind of, kind of referencing certain things from certain movies, right? So, so then we, we have to think about like how to make it more, uh, to have a little bit more personality and yeah. have, have its own identity. So that's the second part, right? And that's also fun too. in yep. the second phase, <laughs> like, we're, we're like writing the stories on top of the characters that we design. Um, developing the world, developing the lore around it. I still remember that we had a, a lot of discussions, like sitting around, not doing much, just debating with everyone. <laughs> everyone has different ideas, and then we, we just throw out our ideas and throw out our uh, our crazy stories about the about the world that we're creating. And then Gerald has to you know pick them all up and kind of <laughs> combine, combine them into <laughs> one cohesive thing. Yeah, so so that was fun, you know, like. Being irresponsible and just throwing out ideas, and then you guys will have to <laughs> clean it up, <laughs> pick it up and, 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 and clean it up. Yeah. Like for me um, personally, that was the fun of really, really the fun of writing for Giga Bash because there's not really like usually it's just the director saying, Oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. But you know, working in, in Passion Republic, uh, everyone has their own uh, great ideas, and you get to see how, at least for myself, I see like how all these ideas can, are actually sort of connected to something greater and I'll try my best to sort of uh, bring out and express what that greater thing is and most of the time I honestly don't know what that is and it's sort of like an <laughs> exploratory process as well mm. sort of like sketching like you know you, you start off with a couple of doodles couple of lines and all of a sudden you get this insane masterpiece that, that like you never really expected it to turn out that way and mm. you know like like Hindsight, uh, maybe when you look back at it a few, few months later, it's like, oh, actually, I'm pretty satisfied with that. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, our players will be happy with the story as well. Yeah. 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 So, what about you, Jack? What's your favorite part about developing Giga Bash? I mean, definitely, I mean, quite similar to what Mel just I mentioned, like, definitely a process of working with all, like, all our teammates. Mm. I think that was the fun part. Like, everyone, you, you just get, uh, like, astonished by what kind of ideas they have. Yeah. Like, for example, especially during a concept phase, I always like very, very like admire the artist's work. Yeah. When they show us co concept, I was like, oh my god, those designs look so cool. And after that animators like um creating those animation and then you, you just get impressed by everyone's work mm. along the way. While everyone's like constantly showing like sharing different kind of designs and like also at the at the same trying to like, I mean incorporate everyone's idea into the mm -hmm. one thing, and I mean I I I would say the process of doing that was like very fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah yeah, and yeah I'm glad really glad to be part of the process really. Yeah. I would say it's not just about the ideas and the the discussions going on. Yeah. Uh, it's also the the work that everybody yeah, put yeah, in. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, it sort of felt like a, I mean the teamwork, the camaraderie that we get, especially you know before launch we were all really into it in the <laughs> trenches and you know doing a lot of things fixing stuff and fixing bugs as much yeah. as you can um that sense of camaraderie is really hard to find yeah yeah, um, yeah. and it's, it's i really appreciate that yeah yeah yeah, yeah no, that really like the near the end of the launch it was a pretty what uh nerve nerve wracking yeah, nerve wracking yes yeah i mean <laughs> full disclosure i think we we 
yeah, we, we really tried our best yeah. um, and it was really nerve wracking, especially this being our first, first. very first game and we're, we're developing our first game and we're self-publishing our first game as well. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things that we never really expected it to happen um, and it happened like the sort of like the, 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 the price thingy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... So things like that kind of it's kind of like a learning process for us, uh, and yeah. I'm really grateful that our you know our community was really really supportive and uh, yeah, forgiving uh, towards us. Uh, yeah, and 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 we'll try our best you know to deliver as always. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, what about like what challenges did the team face? Like, like at least in your perspective. Challenges. Like during the game, like when you guys were prototyping the game, like yeah. the core of the gameplay, right? Like what challenges did you guys face? Um, Maybe a bit. Uh, the, uh, it's kind of there, there's many challenges obviously yeah. throughout yeah. the whole process. Um, like I mentioned just now, um, the the third person camera and then the you know changing that um, after a year in production, I think was it maybe yeah. like half a year yeah. in production uh, was challenging. And then throughout, along the way, we had Different a bunch of uh, other kind of challenges. Yeah, revamps and redos. Uh, like having online because of the fact that we have no experience working on a game. Uh, mm. To be very honest, yeah. So that was challenging. Uh, putting out a game in twenty twenty two is challenging. Uh, trying to meet deadlines is challenging. So I don't I don't know which one we should go with, but but yeah, I'm I it's it's there's a lot of uh, a lot to draw from, but. Mm. Uh, but I'm appreciative of you know having the challenge and having this opportunity to work on this thing, um, and being able to ship it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like I imagine, I imagine that uh, deadlines is a pretty challenging thing for everyone, right? Yeah. Like, do you remember like how how we sort of overcame it, like for for Giga Just would pause it. I think <laughs> <Everyone> <laughs> would pause it. Would pause it. <laughs> You just I'll gotta, just you just gotta I, put your head down and you just gotta do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. I just chunk in my coffee. Let's do it. It was tough, but it was <laughs> rewarding in the end. Um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's also the thing with artists. I, I don't know whether you can relate to this uh, or not, Matt. But without a deadline, we wouldn't be able to finish. Yeah. I mean, we would never finish. Oh yeah. 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 So I, I well, think it's a, it's an artist thing. You know, we always want to tweak and you know do more mm. uh, it's never perfect yeah, yeah it's just mm. oh yeah. yeah like there's there's already parts of this that i really desperately want to go back over and and fiddle with mm -hmm. and i have to slap myself and say stop and just keep moving <laughs> exactly. it's it's a it's a drawing for a live stream you you, you, you don't have to like it I'm working good. on another it looks piece. perfect to me. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no, I mean I'm I'm really I really liking how it's coming out. Yeah. But I I've got another piece over here that I absolutely cannot show because it's pending approval. But um, let's just say uh, those uh those scales um, uh those 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 scales on a particular character. I decided, well, I think I'm going to uh, make them more detailed than I ever have before. This will go well. Um, so you, you, and then of course, you know, the, the client is like, uh, well, Hey, um, it's, it's, it's due at this, this time or this date. And I'm like, Oh crap. Um, do we have any wiggle room? Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it absolutely is like, um, uh, Oh, there was a, there was a word, there was a t thing I wanted to say about, about deadlines. Um, cause yeah. Um, and especially someone like me, uh, a lot of artists, you know, we've got, you know, ADHD or OCD or whatever. And sometimes having a deadline is crucial to actually getting it done. Yeah. Um, because otherwise we'll just, and and we'll just sit and fuss with it and fuss with it. I think it was Da Vinci who said, uh, "Art is never finished, only abandoned." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. What was the question again? I forgot. Sure. <laughs> 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 deadlines. I think y'all yeah, were talking about challenges. Challenge. Um, challenges. Yeah, there, there were many. Um, any specific challenge? I can't think of anything that's like. Maybe there's just like. We, we just went through a lot of challenges and we sort of like just keep working on it. Yeah. And not really uh, like, yeah. you know, we just trying oh, to I mean, we still have challenges coming, like, like as of right now, 
uh, <laughs> there are still a few critical <laughs> bugs that we, we are still trying to figure out um, and putting out patches and obviously doing you know more support in the future mm. yeah. Uh, but yeah so that those are you know our current challenges like I, I feel like you know what's what's before I, I kind of had a little bit of a blackout <laughs> what happened are we are we allowed to sort of say like you know I'm sure like the fans are like wondering you know uh, hint hint wink wink what's coming up for Giga Bash in the future mm. what's coming up mm. for Giga Bash mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we are working on something exciting uh, yeah that, that's all I can say. <laughs> that's I can say. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, I was uh, yeah. I was actually I just remembered something. Um, y'all were talking about you know, um, sorry, one sec. Uh, no, that's not correct. That's not correct. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, our friend Michael McCants just uh, 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 had made a Gigabash uh, Facebook group, oh, and oh, okay. Uh, okay. I just shared the. Uh, the event to the group so yay and thank you Kasten, for texting me <laughs> and letting me know about that nice. um but yeah um uh i was gonna say um with regards to like worrying about copyright specifically with the godzilla dance uh that dance fun fact that dance did not originate with godzilla um it was a i think a manga character that was popular oh, in japan in the 60s and uh it was uh it, it was called the dragon something she like the little dance the she she uh, and they were just like uh, they were like ah make godzilla do it um <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's gonna start throwing around accusations of uh copyright infringement <laughs> uh i think um, we, we, we'd already be in trouble if <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's not you know for me that so I think we're fine. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, I, think you guys are I like how like everyone's like doing homage homages here and there. Yeah, like you know we are we all just standing on the shoulders of giants. Like you yeah. know, like, Godzilla is referencing the Godzilla dance is referencing this, and we are referencing Godzilla dance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just a long chain of uh, yeah, of homages <laughs> at this point. <laughs> sure. But like uh oh, yeah, was... so just another reminder to our audiences: if you just hopped on board, uh, we are doing a giveaway later down to the stream. So the one of the giveaways is the Rawa masterpiece work that is in progress right now by Matt Frank, <laughs> and there will be another one, uh, which we will review later. So please stay oh. until the end of the stream. Someone asked if the flying flame torn refers to uh, Godzilla as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly different, but yes. <laughs> yeah, we try to make it a little bit more subtle uh, for that one, uh, since it's not like flying out. <laughs> so he, he just <laughs> does a circular one. Yeah. I imagine, like, maybe for Jack, like, flying, like, a ton that actually is like flying would be a technical challenge, no, <laughs> huge <not>. technical challenge. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yes, it's a reference, yes. <laughs> And it's the one you are thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's a silly one again. We, we always like gravitate towards the uh, the sillier side of uh, kaiju fandom, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's just it's just funny. Then like, uh, have you guys? Do you guys uh, have a favorite? Like, this is just a personal question for me to you guys. Like, do you have a favorite story mode campaign? Favorite story mode. Yeah, let's <sighs> let's start with Nell. Ah, uh, the last one. I mean, Thundercross one is the most elaborated because there's there's humans in it talking hmm. uh so yeah so definitely that one um and that, that's the reason why we put him at the very last one because people who are invested probably will kind of appreciate it i hope hmm. um and then it kind of ended in a more climactic uh way so so yeah so for me it's it's definitely the Thundercross one it's more fleshed out hmm. yeah what about you jack we'll say the same thing the, oh, yeah, I also like yeah. the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder storyline the most. Yeah. Mm. And I would say after that would be Gorogong for me. Oh. Uh, yep. Why why Gorogong? I mean I mean the story's loose. I mean it sounds cool, you know? Like uh <laughs> a Gorogong one? The Gorogong I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the, Actually, the, the last game. level of Gorogong's uh story is, is the most fun for me. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's Gorogong the only one that you get to fight 
Rawa. Rawa. <laughs> yeah. So, I think at that also one of the reasons I would yeah. put Gorogon story on second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what What about Matt? Which one's your favorite storyline? Did you finish? Um. Uh, oh yeah. No, I I got them all done. I uh was really beating my head against the wall uh, with Wooly fighting uh, uh, the final boss, but um, <laughs> I uh, we patched that. But uh, I, <laughs> what, Sorry was that? that? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, the the last one definitely was. Uh, I I think they are all uh, strong in their own ways. Um, I like that they all kind of felt like different movies. Um, the uh, uh, I think the oh, what's his name? Pipi Juris's story was uh, uh, really fun. Like I really liked that. Um, the one uh, uh, the one with Wooly is so cute because <laughs> it's so creative, and it's just like it's like one part storybook, one part um documentary exactly. yeah like, exactly that's what we're going yeah. for yeah i mean we didn't have the budget but we wanted uh like david edinburgh to, to voice it oh. <laughs> no, i'm just kidding like someone like that kind of feeling that this is what we're doing yeah for. yeah <laughs> Uh, uh, you're just like, oh, and here we see the woolly <laughs> in oh, its natural nice habitat. <laughs> oh, where's my whiskey? Um, just, uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, he, he seems like he'd be down for it. Uh, but no, um, I, I don't know. I, I like them all. I, I thought the last one with Thunder Tross was really good. It had like the strongest emotional core. Mm. But I think for the one that I had that, that, that surprised me the most was, uh, PP Juris. <laughs> Oh, that that one really kept throwing stuff at me, and I'm like, "Where is this going?" <laughs> and then I it went in a direction I did not expect, and I'm like, "Oh, I I guess that's the end of that story." <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that one might have been the one that stuck with me the most. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks for the thanks for the support, man. I really appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like, totally. what, what are you yourself? For me, I. I want to say Thunder Tross because that's the one I worked the hardest on. Uh, mm, like, the most fun as well, right? And yeah. the most fun and uh, challenging to write because like there's a lot of uh, different characters, characters too, and yeah. really trying to uh, like one of the hardest one was actually getting uh, the supporting character in the story, uh, Giga Man. Yeah, mm-hmm. like trying to get Giga Man's personality down was one of the hardest because he's he's sort of like the most beloved one of the most beloved characters of the game, at least internally, and uh, really trying to find the right uh, voice for him was hard. And especially we don't really have a uh, voiceover. So like finding a voice was was a really challenge yeah. and uh, expressing that voice using silent uh, methods such as you know, cut, silent cutscenes, uh, the text, his dialogue, that was really hard to do. Mm-hmm. And but I, I think the most fun to create was definitely Wooly because it's just so yeah, yeah. out there. It's, it's just so, so out there, yeah. And <laughs> I remember listening to uh, like Dave, David Attenborough, like all his documentaries in the background, just trying to sort of brainwash myself to have uh, <laughs> Mr. David's, uh, I, I suppose he's Sir, like, Sir, Sir, David, Sir, Sir Attenborough's <laughs> uh, voice in my head, <laughs> just playing over and over. And that... Uh, to to those of you who who are more keen on the lore, uh, the narrator in Wooly's uh, storyline is actually the researcher, the yeti yeah, researcher yeah. you oh. find in P.P. Jura's <laughs> story. Nice. Yeah. Oh, we have a question for us. No, someone's just. <laughs> no, go ahead. Sorry, continue. <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat and yeah, yeah like I, I saw someone was asking like, what what order did we created. Uh, the storyline. Oh yeah. So actually, the first one was PP Juras. Juras was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. The last one was Gorgon. The last one was Gorgon. Yeah. And then Gorgon oh. became the first you played. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Thunder Trust was. Yeah, it was PP Juras. Thunder Trust. Then. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. PP Juras. Wooly. Wooly. Thunder Trust. Then and then Gorgon. Gorgon. Yeah. 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 But I I say that Thunder Trust took the longest to to sort of craft out. Uh, yeah. He had the most like Thunder Chos, the storyline had the most uh characters. You have Dr. Reiner, who's sort of a new 
like it's not it's an npc pretty much when really trying to find the right voice for him was also a challenge as well mm. and and yeah and yuki yuki was also pretty pretty tough to get like wanted release really wanted something that was unique to thunder trust yeah and i don't think i want i'm not gonna spoil anymore right <laughs> yeah no <laughs> that, that is not the time I yeah. yeah but anyway. i um oh um yeah, I was just I, I wanted to uh, make a note about something uh, with uh, with the characters and stuff. Yeah, the, the, the Thunder Tross story really felt like I felt like I was kind of watching a, a, an anime on fast forward. And um, yeah. I really wanted to I wanted to marinate in it and really feel the betrayal, you know, so because you're really tapping those emotions. Um, even though it was on such a such a tight time frame, because. Um, that feels like, like, I feel like I wanted to know. Mo- I wanted to know more about Doctor uh, Doctor Reiner. Was that his name? Yep. Yeah, I wanted to know more about him. Like, why he's like this, and because um, when when you're playing uh, the Pipijuras uh, mission, I think the Pipijuras yep. story, that's when they show up, and the way Reiner talks to uh, Yuji yeah. Yuki. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the way, yeah, the way Reiner talks to 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 Yuji, I was like, I was like, oh, okay, there's something going on there, <laughs> and also like it was borderline very abusive in certain yeah. ways, like very dehumanizing, and I'm like, oh, I want to know about that. What's going on there? Mm. So anyway, I just wanted to express that because. <laughs> For for future, yeah, but it's mm-hmm. all fleshed Stop. out in the back. <laughs> it's all ready. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yep. Glad glad that you 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 dug into it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I like to I like to uh, I like to kind of dissect stuff a little bit and kind of see where characters are coming from, especially if not everything's out in the open and you're just getting little bits and pieces. Um, there's a this is a bit of a, a just nerd talk, but there in the Blu-ray for Godzilla King of the Monsters, there's an alternate take of a conversation that um, Millie Bobby Brown is having with uh, Vera Farmiga with her mom, if everybody remembers those characters. Uh huh. Yeah. And. Um, Vera Farmiga's character, uh, like in the movie, in the final film, she's sort of like kind of she's just kind of wishy washy and she's kind of dancing around stuff a little bit and mm-hmm. and she's not doesn't really seem all that committed to what's going on. It just it's kind of weak by comparison. And then in the alternate take, the tone of the conversation is totally different. And you notice that um, Vera Farmiga's character is really abusive, like immediately verbally abusive when things are not going her way. And I was like, that is so much more interesting. Yeah. And so much juicier as a storytelling <laughs> idea. And I was mad <laughs> when I went back and rewatched it. I'm like, oh, this doesn't have the teeth. So anyway, I just... I even if your your story is about kaiju, if you can just wing a little bit of pathos in there, a little bit of 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 stuff going on under the surface, it just makes your story that much more rich. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. You know, like one of the challenges was really because you know we are a kaiju game, mm-hmm. and we at mm-hmm. least personally, I want this to be about kaiju's, but mm-hmm. you know, kaiju's are sort of primal and. Uh, raw and all about like power mm-hmm. you know the will to power kind of thing and like to me like what what more can we express within this universe and really i was trying to sort of give like the human perspective of living in such a world where uh, the titans are are the most dominant yeah. mm-hmm. things around and it's like an everyday thing for the humans there and really exploring you know what else would a human feel what other sights or colors of humanity we will see mm. so it's not just about like ah it's it's the kaiju they are attacking it's not just about fear. <laughs> you know like what else like you know like uh the yeti researcher you know a man so passionate about yetis mm-hmm. he's not even 
like the fear of him being crushed by a yeti doesn't even like go through his mind. He's just like, <laughs> like going all the way, all the way for the woolies, like for the yetis and all that. Yeah, just really, That's... it was really a fun experience. Yeah, mm. definitely yeah. something that we want to explore further in the, in, in the future. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Stay tuned. I know I get really frustrated when um, the, the rhetoric starts up of people saying, well, you know, it would probably be better if they just made like two hours of kaiju fighting and uh, for a movie. And like, okay, we all know why we're here, but... <laughs> It's like, but you know, you don't like you, you sit there and you, you almost run out of like you, 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 you struggle to get the words out because you're trying to express like how a kaiju story can be really compelling and really well made if you have like the right themes and the right characters and stuff. Hmm. And then you see people like I remember when uh, the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer dropped, uh, Kevin Smith. Uh, which I actually really like him as a writer. I like the 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 He Man show he did. Oh, I'm gonna get. Oh, people are gonna get mad at me for saying that. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, I I like him as a writer, but then he kind of got on Twitter and was like, "Well, you know, I think it would be cool if there was like a like a, a, a like just a two hour kaiju movie where it's just monsters fighting." And I'm just like, <sighs> okay. Cause that stuff's on YouTube and I kind of tune it out after a while. Like I'll try to watch some of these videos on YouTube of just people doing their own CG animations of monsters fighting. And it's cool to a point, but after a while I'm kind of looking at my watch and thinking like, boy, these two lizards have been trying to kill each other for about 15 minutes. <laughs> um, anyway, what I'm saying is that I, I get you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely agree with that. Like, you know, people want a little bit more, uh, juice out of, out of just like raw combat, right? Yeah, but I feel mm -hmm. like you have to have like build up. You have to have, you know, you have to play with teams. You have to have a story in order for that, in order to earn that, you know, earn that fight. Yeah, that build up mm -hmm. is what makes it valuable. Yeah, you know, like if it's just mm -hmm. a two hour fight, then it wouldn't, you wouldn't treasure it. It's, it's yeah, yeah, it's too much. Yeah, why would you care? Why would yeah. you care? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and that that was one of the other bigger challenge because you know we are primarily a quote unquote fighting game brawler game right yeah and the mm -hmm. players are always fighting and you know the adrenaline of the fight sort of leads them to want to fight more fight more fight yeah. more and mm -hmm. to really in incorporate a story in between was a really tough balance to get the pacing mm -hmm. down right mm -hmm. not to uh drag it out for too long and keeping it just so short and sweet enough to get the point across mm. and get the juice flowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, yeah, I, I, I appreciated that aspect of it. I, uh, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to say. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, it was the, um, yeah, it's the, it's the fighting. It's the, it's the, like, you got to build up to that. You got to build up to that fight, oh, man. You know what? I lost it. Don't worry about it. Y'all talk about something else. Um, <laughs> Then talk, talking about story, right? So mm -hmm. let's uh, place your bets, guys. Uh, Gorgong versus Rawa. Who would technically <laughs> win in your <laughs> mind? Let's start with Mel. Oh my goodness. Uh, you did become the king, right? You did win over <laughs> Rawa. <Yeah. laughs> but and, what if... What and, as if canon, you play right? Rawa? Sorry? What if you play as Rawa? <laughs> And you're facing against Gorgong, like this oh invader came into your house and now like he's like, Roar, give me my give oh me my horn back. Who would win? Rawa would win. Rawa <laughs> would win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's just he just looks scarier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rawa Rawa yeah, for sure for me. Yeah. What about you, Jack? Rawa or Gorgong? King for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will go the opposite. I will go for Gorgon. <laughs> oh! <laughs> like a dirty boy, beat up a king. That sounds cool for me. The underdog, right? <laughs> the underdog. The underdog. Oh, I'm, I'm always. 
Everyone loves underdog. everyone loves the underdog story, man. Everyone yeah, loves the underdog right. win. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Who who would you pick? <laughs> Rava or Gorogon? <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, I I um Gorogon is kind of the underdog and and uh if 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 he it could it really could go either I know I'm 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 <laughs> I'm walking the th- I'm walking the thin line here, um, but no, uh, I think I think um, Gorgong, uh, it, he would have to he would really have to get off a lucky shot, like it's it's like a, a but but size isn't everything when it comes to kaiju, you know? Like I mean, the Mothra caterpillars were able to beat Godzilla, so. And 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 with with and the great thing about y'all having you know an original universe to play with is um, you guys can do that, and yes. fans won't get mad. Um, <laughs> like fans get got fans of Godzilla would get so mad if that the, even the idea of Kong winning, and I'm just like guys, calm down. <laughs> um. I'm almost done with this. I'm just trying to find the right yellow to uh, make the gold pop. Nice. I'm nice. trying to remember where all my yellows are. <laughs> and this cool. giant, horrible bag of Copics. <laughs> Ooh, lightning yellow. Ooh. That could work. I mean, standing up pretty good. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. awesome. I want it now. <laughs> can I have it? Can we like cancel? Uh, uh, no. No. So, sorry guys, we're not doing a giveaway anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so those uh so for those of you who just hopped on board, uh we are giving we are giving away two exclusive uh sketches by Matt Frank. So one of them is this awesome masterpiece in the works right now. It's about Rawa. And there'll be another one which we will review later. So please stay tuned until the end of the stream and participate in the giveaway. And we will tell you guys how to participate uh, then. Yeah, we'll tell you later. Yeah. Yep. So please almost stay there, right? And we'll yeah. almost there, right? So yeah, it should be any minute now. Can I any do a time now? <laughs> Can I take a break for a quick while? Yeah. Sorry, I need a toilet break. Yeah. So, uh, so Jack, tell us. Like, tell us about your background, like, how, how did you get into game development? Oh, that's an interesting story. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start I, from the beginning. Honestly, I never thought I would be in this industry at all. In the, back then, yeah, really, really, I didn't know. I was, like, I was just like, I like computer stuff back then. And, uh, like how, I, how, how far back was back then? Uh, when I just came out from high school, let's go all the way back there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I the only time I mean the time that I got exposed to about knowing about the game industry development industry was, uh, there was a time when my best friend like asked me to like, oh, there's an RPG maker now, let's go try it, let's try to the the one on Steam, right? Yeah, yeah. it used to be yeah yeah yeah. And they asked me to go try it out. It's like get get. I mean, that was the first time I know about like game development. Uh, but actually, I did not like get into it that time. And actually, I went another, which is just study like the general science stuff. Mm. Then after that, when I about to get into my actual university degree, I went. I need to pick my what profession I want to be in. Yeah. I just simply flip through the you know the brochure from the university. Then I suddenly see something called game development. I was just like, that sounds cool. Um. <laughs> like why don't I just give you a try? <laughs> and that, that's how I end up in game development. Oh. And as times go when I got into the actual course itself, I actually fell in love with it. I think I think there's actually there's one motive why I got attracted to it. Because myself I like art. Mm. And I also like like more technical things at the same time. So I wonder like what like what, what I can do to have both of them like have both of the awesome things together that I can work with mm. in my future. Then I've realized that game development is kind of the thing that I can do both of them. I can have like, and I mean, I can like um, enjoy the art itself, the artistic aspect of it at the same time to like challenge my brain for the technical aspect of it mm. at the same time. So uh, I, I would say that was like a subconscious mm. uh, motivation behind why I picked game development in the end and how I got into the industry in the end. So, so like art yeah. is it like drawing? Or yeah, drawing. Because I used to draw back then. <laughs> mm. Like, 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 wow. like. Uh, I like to draw. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, then um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that was one reason why I want to get into. I think that was the reason why I get into this industry, lah. Just like I want to do that mm. sometimes, so or at least provide some input too. Yeah, yeah. Think- Even though I don't draw a lot these days, but I mean, being able to see other people like who can who work in this industry who do arts, I mean, kind of like make me feel happy. Yeah. Yeah. Like we are watching Matt draw right now. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I was like, wow. Uh, bring out the Copic markers out. I man. hope I can draw like him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so like we, I guess we have to really give a shout out to the to your friend who who like introduced you to RPG Maker. Yeah. <laughs> it's thanks to your friend that we got. Bullied. He planted a seed. Yes. Way back. <laughs> and somehow, I mean, he was the one who wanted to be in game dev, and now he. I mean, I mean, he told to me before he used to design his own like game oh. thing, like the on, I mean, the game on the book. Yeah. He designed a game on the book, that kind of thing. Yeah. And but he ended up not being a game developer, but I'm end up being a game developer. You That's carry. the ironic part. <laughs> you carry the mantle now. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. What about what about you, Matt? How how did you get into what you're doing right now? How did you start um, your career? <laughs> well, I was, uh, I, I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I, I liked drawing, uh, but it was more of a, uh, just a kind of a fun little pastime. You know, when you're a kid, you draw because it's just something to do, you know, something to do yeah. with your hands and it keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> and, um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I really like, I liked drawing dinosaurs. I liked drawing, of course, Godzilla and other monsters and things like that. And then in, um, in high school, I got really into anime and manga. And the idea of, you know, creating a story and creating a narrative or being part of creating a story and a narrative through art was really appealing to me. And that became like a, a driving force in wanting to go into comics. Um, and, uh, and and that was what... Uh, that was kind of what led me to where I am now. Uh, of course, I remember uh, I remember talking to my mom about it. She was like, well, what do you want to be when you go to college? Or what do you want to go to college for and stuff? And I said, uh, uh, it was literally, I remember the conversation was literally like, she basically kicked in the door to my room oh. and was like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, ah, um, I guess I want to be an artist. And she's like, oh, God. Um <laughs> No, but uh, uh, they were, uh, you know, my parents were very like, you, you know, they, they, you know, paid for my college and everything. So I'm very fortunate in that respect. And, uh, but I went to uh, the university and I found out after I got there that they had just closed their illustration program. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. So I, I proceeded to spend like the better part of four years basically getting into fights with my teachers as to whether or not comics are art. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, really it was the desire to, uh, it was the desire to, part of it was the desire to make, to do narratives and to draw cool characters, but mostly it was wanting to draw cool characters. It was like, I want to draw these characters and I don't want to have to do anything else. So <laughs> I just, yeah, it kind of brute forced my way into having a having a career, and I remembered it was in college that I started doing um, uh, I started doing Godzilla Neo, which was just a fun fan project where I was just redesigning every Godzilla monster just for fun, and it wasn't until later that I kind of realized the reason why it got so popular was because I was like the only person stubbornly refusing to do anything but Godzilla art <laughs> on the internet at the time. There were no movies coming out. There weren't any comics for another like five years, five or so. And so I was like the only person doing Godzilla. Well, and people were, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, it's so crazy to think that like this is because I just again stubbornly refuse to draw anything else. Um, which a uh, bit of advice to my fellow artists out there: um, don't just stubbornly draw one thing. Like, learn how to draw other stuff because it took me a long time to figure out how to really how to get better at drawing people. 
um, because I was so laser focused on monsters. And monsters are fun, but like we talked about, you've got to have people to go with your monsters. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm just about done. Uh, I wanted to throw some uh, some um, uh, uh, flavor into the background. Um, and uh, but I noticed we're coming up on the two hour mark, so I better just. If I get saucy later, maybe I'll throw a little extra oh, fire in the oh. background or something. But um, at the moment, I better go ahead oh. and uh, add my uh, add my my honko. Oh, um, let's go! The I stew. The stew. oh yes. The these were given to me by a fan in Japan. Um, he 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 gave me a, a set of two. One says uh, Mato, and the other one says uh, Kaiju O, or Monster King, which is very flattering. Oh. Line it up, line it up, line it up. Ha-ha! Ah. <laughs> oh, <it did. laughs> one more for luck. Ah, there it is. <laughs> nice. Okay. And then uh, I will actually sign it if I can find the right pen. Twenty twenty two. That's the date. Okay, and there you go. So, Woo. yeah, I'm really proud how this turned out. I like it. Awesome. Are we doing a giveaway now? Oh, Are well, you... uh, we can. <laughs> can you, you guys want the camera? Let's ha just have a close up for the I'll... fans. Yeah, I'll turn the camera. Hold on. I just need to. Oh, oh God, oh God, everything's fine. <laughs> just like awesome. things are things are just uh exploding for no reason and like <laughs> why did that explode wait i have to put it over here okay wait she's okay we're good all good okay hi <laughs> welcome back <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. it's two hours in that position oh yeah <laughs> My my assistant in the other room is like, yup, I can hear your bones popping. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, can we have a look at the? Uh, you want to show the uh, the artwork, right? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. So, Thank you uh, how are you gonna get it? Yeah. So, uh, to all our audiences watching right now, uh, we'll be beginning the giveaway. And we'll be doing it as like a lucky draw. So to participate in the lucky draw to win the Rawa sketch artwork, please type hashtag Rawa. That's hashtag R A W A full caps. Hashtag hashtag Rawa R A W A in the chat. In the right? chat, yeah. In stream right now. In the chat. Full caps. In the full chat. Caps. In the Twitch chat. Yeah, Twitch chat right now. So all you moochers who are like. Uh... <laughs> Full cat guys. Just watching. Yeah. Quick, go make a Twitch account real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Once, once, is, once, yeah. More than once is fine. More than more than once is fine, yeah, but okay. it'll only count as one. Okay, <laughs> uh, it's not a ballot. So yep, yep. <laughs> hashtag once. Rama, once. Yeah, man. So tell us how how you feel about this piece. I I like it. I like how it came out. I I went ahead and I threw a little extra. Ooh, lane kind of around it. Just, uh, it. It kind of fills out the art. What is that? Um, so I'm just um. See, you're right. You've got to set stuff down, or else you're just gonna keep fussing with it. But um, no, I really like how it came out. I um, like I said, the character is very cool, and uh, I just um, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, I. For a long time, doing stuff with Copic markers, like actually actually doing Copics, uh, something I kind of tried to avoid because I didn't have I, I never got any like decent training when it came to like doing physical colors. So many of my painting teachers sucked, and uh, <laughs> the um, um, well, not all of them, but um, you know, but but recently I've been studying like how to get a little how to how to use Copics and. You know, I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could keep fussing with it, but I really like how it came out. I like that extra little thing on Rawa's yeah, canine. Yeah. That uh, 
what is that? What is that little thing? It's it's a thing that a lot of I assume a lot of Naga have as well, yeah, right? Yeah, incisor teeth, right? Yeah, now? they have scissor teeth. Yeah, incisor. Yeah. Wow. They so just go like teeth, that. Yeah. Like that. Okay. I'm yeah. Just, hold on. It's golden. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't Dude, you stop. Want to mind the okay. Other... Stop, stop I saw that there's a few yeah, so, guys coming in. So please, uh, if you want uh, to our fans, remember to type hashtag Rawa. Hashtag R A W A, full caps in the Twitch chat to stand a chance, chance. Yep. to win this amazing Rawa sketch, <laughs> and of course uh, the you. the lucky draw will be closing uh, in one in minute. What? One, one minute. minute. Yep. Get it in. So get it in, one guys. One whole minute. Get them in now. Get in right now. If not, I'm gonna win it. Oh. No, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. So yeah. Bad. Defaults. <laughs> Yeah, no, I see, really like how, I like how this came out. It's uh, it's 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 it's, it's a fun monster, fun design, and I like the way the flame complements. He, he's got that bluish, greenish uh, yeah. flame that complements yeah, the gold flame. and the the gray. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I like like it. the right. the thing about the thing about the blue flame or the green flame is, uh, in in Southeast Asian naga, yeah, uh, they don't we don't. Our, our dragons don't spew fire. Yeah. <laughs> so we can, okay. but we want as a as a character as, as a playable character, we want him to kind of you know like breathe fire. Yeah. So yeah, blue fire it is. Green fire, blue green blue green fire. And like it the is. like how how like when he breathes fire, like there's like more fire exhausting <laughs> out from his back. Yeah. Like that. That yeah. sort of came from actually that sort of came from a uh, Gundam. Oh uh, yeah, like, yeah, uh, the wing uh, turn turn a Gundam. Specifically, you know, oh. the butterfly wing effects. Yeah, it's it's sort of referencing that as well. So so like, okay, we're doing the uh, oh. So the, it's time to do to random. do the lucky draw. The lucky draw. Can, draw. They, can everybody see this? Can they? Okay. All right. Cool. Let's go. Okay. So we'll begin rolling in three, two, one. Roll. Does it? Space Dragon, Dragon 14. 14. Space Dragon 14. Woo! Congratulations to Space, Space Dragon, Dragon 14. 14. You are the lucky yeah. winner to, Rawa, to Matt Frank's Rawa sketch. Uh, please remember to uh, uh, DM us on Twitter or email us on, at team at passionrepublicgames.com or yeah, yeah. team at passionrepublicgames.com uh, or just DM us on Twitter, right? Oh, oh, we can actually message him right now, right? We can? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mean, we got you, we got you. Yeah, yeah. we got you, Space Dragon 1-4. <laughs> we got you. I like how his name is just Dragon. Has the word Dragon in it. It's so fitting. <laughs> you want Rawa? You ah! want? We have another one? Rawa, yeah. yeah. I see it's one. it's, it's Rawa. It's just Rawa on that. like a co tiny computer. Like, dee, 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 dee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Congratulations once again. So let's uh, move on to the next giveaway. Matt, can you please do the review? Two. So I did this one a little while before the stream and I had just enough time to get a nap. So um, I, uh, I decided to do Rohana and uh, I really like how this one came out. Whoa! Let's go! Let's go! Wow. <laughs> I mean, guys, this is the first time we, we saw it as well. So. <laughs> I I just I was having trouble deciding who I wanted to draw and um and this I and I remembered seeing the picture the screenshot of Rawa kind of sitting on the throne yeah. of thorns that she has and um I, and because I had recently drawn that uh drawing of Gigan's mom I know what the internet likes um <laughs> I uh I thought you know she does kind of look like she's crossing her legs and kind of reclining. And I thought that's a fun, that's fun, that's fun. And I had to throw this little guy in too. Yeah, they're, just, they're so cute. Right? Yeah, Picking yeah, cool. Yeah. So yeah. for this one, huh. all right. So for to win this one, uh, chat, please type hashtag Rohana. So that's hashtag R O H A N N A, full cat. Two ends. Two ends. Two ends. So R O H A N N A, full caps. And with two ends. Yep, that's looking right Let's on go. chat. Yep, put it in. You got one minute, and then we'll be closing the 
lucky draw. So let's put it in, boys and ladies and kaijus and heroes. <laughs> Oh, they look oh, cool let's go! Again. Look at them both! <laughs> nice. I really like how they came out. Yeah. Space Dragon, you don't get this one. Um, <laughs> yeah. You got one! <laughs> Turn the light on this a little so, bit. So, do you want to like, explain like, how uh, like, Matt's going to mail, mail it to them, right? Yeah, so... Yeah. Mail, uh, Matt is going to... What? We... No, we'll figure out yeah. the logistics later. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. figure out the logistics yeah. later. Yeah, I yeah. should be able to take care of it. Um, my my assistant has all that on lockdown, so uh, I should I'd just be like, all right, send it out. Uh, I won't throw it over my shoulder, but um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I really um, I like how these came out. I like these characters a lot. Yeah. They're very colorful. Now, now we just need like one more. Uh, one more minute. One. No, we need one. Oh, we need score one more drawing. Wait, we what? need a Skorak sketch to complete the Tarabak, uh, you know, the, the, the power Tarabak. triangle. <laughs> we just need that in the future. Uh, uh, okay. We can always commission, well, you can him, email. commission Matt to do another one. <laughs> I, I am so hungry. Um, <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like a hummingbird. Uh, two hours of drawing, and I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> um, no, uh, 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 I was gonna say I do kind of want to draw Skorak now, but I have I have so many other deadlines right now to work on. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad I could take some time for this. This was a lot of fun. It, it looks incredible. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks for like you know yeah. like doing this. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're time, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool. All good. Right. Okay. Cool. Let's so do the roll. Time is up, guys. So let's begin the roll in <laughs> five, <laughs> four, oh, hold on. Wait, three, oh, yeah. two, one. That's roll. Good. And the winner is Tieria Prime. Tieria Prime. What? What's the name? Pieria Prime. Pieria Prime. Are we, are we pronouncing Pieria Prime? Yeah, I think I'm probably yeah. butchering the yeah. pronunciation. Uh, sorry about that. But yeah, congratulations, yeah, yeah. congratulations, you won. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Yay. You have won the Rohana artwork. I'm glad these are going to go to good homes, I assume. Um, <laughs> and I'll scan cool. these and put them up online so people can see them, actually. Yes. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. So to Thierry Prime, please uh, DM us on Twitter or email us at team at passionrepublicgames.com. Yeah. yeah. And we'll, yep. our, our guys will get, we'll get in contact, contact with you guys. You. Yeah. And we'll, we'll send it your way. Cool. Awesome. All right. Yeah. That's, that's about it. Yeah, that's today, about right? it for the sketches. And now we'll move on to one surprise yeah, review one... for everyone. Oh, oh. Take all surprise. One review. It's it's not DLC, guys. <laughs> it's not yet. Oh. Oh, man. But it's still exciting. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. Ready, guys? Yeah. yeah. One. Yeah, look up this down first. Right. One. So, two. Yeah. Three. Yeah. We previously oh. like, went up onto the camera. Yep. Is it? Yes. So y'all are gonna need to t t put that in the camera. Oh, yeah. yeah there you Can go. Oh, look at that. It's lovely. Yeah. Right. I think we need, to, we need to do like a slow pan. A slow pan. Okay. Like slow pan. Right. Like slow Let's pan. start from here. All right, go. Like, like that, and then we just pan over. Look at that. Yes. So this amazing <laughs> masterpiece is also another piece by Matt. Yeah. Thank you very much, especially for uh, incorporating the Giga Man and Rawa fighting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you so oh, much yeah. for that. This is like. I'm really. Uh... Really proud of that. I, I, I really, it was time consuming, but I was really happy I could do it. Um, we originally had plans for some other stuff, but I'm, I was doing like nine different things at the time. And I'm like, guys, I can, please, for the love of God, can I just do one 10 character piece? Um, yeah, I and, uh, but I really, I really like how it came out. Oh, yeah, um, we loved it as well. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's Did I? A lot, incredible. And and it kind of captures the the chaotic you know like factor of playing the game, Perfect. like everything is going on at the same time and they're all doing like crazy things, stealing score skull, and you know like this crazy stuff. We we loved it. Yeah, 
Yeah. And we're still thinking I, about how and what we're going to do with this. <laughs> what are we going to do with this? Mouse pet. <laughs> mouse pad. One giant mouse pad. It looks pad. perfect for a mouse pad. Yeah. 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 Like I've um, been I've been preaching about Gigaman and Rawa fighting as a thing for so long. Thank you so much for putting it in. Yeah. I've been preaching it awesome. for so long. Thank you so so much. We can't do Godzilla versus Ultra, but we can do this. I, yes. I, I, I like you managed to capture that like there's only two heroes trying to fight. Yeah. Like that that amount of monster that I was like, oh my god, how many monsters are we to fight? <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I, I I really this is when I got real familiar with those characters. And um I remembered the uh yeah the the I, I think I think out of everything, the only note I got was that uh, Rawa's armor wasn't gold enough. Like I had to make his oh, gold yeah. pop a little bit more. You, but you um, it, yeah, yeah. I did I I can't remember. Did I send you guys the original the the drawing that was like on? It was like several. Oh, yes, 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 we did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I had a I had a tape I had a tape bristle board together um, to get it all laid out and everything and i remembered uh i took it with me to a friend's D &D, uh uh <laughs> at a friend's house playing D D, and i'm just like yeah yeah yeah, hang on just call me when my time's when it's my turn and i'm just like <laughs> over there working on it in the corner oh, <laughs> the friends but, hate you <laughs> yeah but it was I, I was a lot of fun I, and i really enjoyed working with you guys and y'all seem like a good bunch of good bunch of folks so i uh i, I, I hopefully will get to do more in the future yeah, yeah. hopefully yeah looking forward to that like yeah. I, I imagine fitting ten characters in one composition is a pretty tough thing to do. Yeah, yeah. One thing I really yeah. appreciate is that, and also like I kind of understand that it's really tough, for, especially for what you've been doing, man. Is that all the characters has to kind of face the camera, like yeah. face the face the audience. That's the toughest thing yeah. I feel. Like everybody's facing, but then they also have to look natural and yep. fighting each other at the same time. That's yeah. That's got to be tough. Yeah, uh, well, I, I appreciate that. I, um, I I know I had a little bit of help with it. I have a couple of artists that I sometimes work with who just to, just to help take some of the pressure off my schedule. I'm trying to remember who flatted it because uh, I had somebody come in and like just lay down some basic flat colors just to just so I could have a springboard to jump off of. And you know, I wound up changing a lot of it, but it's just it's just busy work. But um, uh, my uh, editor over at Unlikely Heroes Studios, um, Lori Foster, actually did a little bit of inking in some of the spots because I was like, these buildings, I don't want to ink these buildings. Lori, ink the buildings. Um, <laughs> so uh, these? <laughs> it was like a cup, like kind of in the yeah, bottom yeah. corner. I was literally like, I'm done. I need to sleep. So, <laughs> I, um, but I mean, uh, I'm very fortunate that I have every uh, that's um, I I have people I can rely on to kind of help out a little bit if I need to take a break or if I need mm -hmm. to sleep or you know uh, work on something else um, and uh, because it, it takes so much of my personal pride mm -hmm. to like no I have to do the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did I mean you know. Uh, the 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 first tiny percentage that they were able to help out with uh, still was a big help, but yeah, I mean it was still like a lot of work, and I kept fussing with yeah. it. I was like, I gotta get the, I gotta get the the Gorgong's fist right, and I gotta, I gotta get the the flames on Rawa right, and uh, uh, and I was like Ziva Ziva uh, uh, what uh, that that thing. Uh, I was like, are people gonna know what that is? Because <laughs> like, he's really in the background, <laughs> so. It was a lot of fun, though. It was a lot of fun to do. And I look back on it, and I'm just like, man, whoever made that was really good at what they did. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Thank Thanks you. <laughs> thank you for this. Well, we'll figure out what to do with this. Like, you know, probably be some kind of merch, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but we're still exploring that. Kind of thing, yep. Yeah. Right now, I want to take this home. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And that concludes our stream today. Once again, congratulations to our winner, yeah. uh, Space Dragon 14 and Hiara Hiria Prime for winning the Rawa and Rohana sketch. So uh, we want to make a couple more announcements. Okay, uh, you wanna, oh, sorry, can you hold this? I hold it, hold it, I hold it, I hold it.
It's a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, so we got a couple of announcements for our fans. So first off, for our fans in Malaysia, we are going to Animangaki at Mines Convention Center from 27th to 28th August. Yep, so if you'd like to meet us there and play the games, talk, hang out with the devs, we'll see you at Animangaki. Yep. And up next is uh, for our German friends. We are coming oh, to European Gamescom. Friends. Yes, <laughs> European friends. <laughs> yes, for all our European friends, we are going to Gamescom in Germany. Next right? week, yeah. yeah next, next week, week uh, 24th to 28th of August. You get to meet uh, both our directors, so Mel and also Aiken. We'll be there at indie, at the Indie Arena booth uh, number 26. Yep, that's Indie Arena booth number 26 at Gamescom. Yep, so the last announcement will be uh, we are, we'll be going to Tokyo Game Show in September. So that's 15th to 18th of September. So you get to meet me and Jack and a few more of our teammates will be there as well. So come hang out and say hi, play the yeah. game. And we've also got a lot of cool surprises <laughs> waiting for you at our booth. Yeah. So we'll see you guys there, guys. Yep. And lastly, a uh, shout out to Matt Frank for coming on board and hanging out with us and doing all this amazing artwork. So yeah. remember to follow Matt Frank on yeah. Twitter and all the social media channels. So Matt Frank, can you, can you give a shout out of your Twitter handle or your channels? Uh, yeah, my uh, Twitter handle is uh, the very maturely named Spankzilla85. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, my Instagram is um, uh mattzilla85 i'm like blanking on my own instagram name um but my my website is mattfrankart.net and if you go to the links page on there i have links to like all the things i do my youtube channel my the rage select channel um i've uh i've got a few events uh myself coming up i've got giganticon in a few weeks in colleen texas i've got all monsters attack which is going to be in Indianapolis. And we have an amazing guest list for that show. Like it's like, like Asagi from the Gamera trilogy and um, Hurricane Ryu. Uh, we have a bunch of a bunch of suit actors and Godzilla actors and kaiju actors. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then um, I've got a show. I've, I've got uh, oh, a new wave expo in Corpus Christi uh, towards the end of October. And I've got a couple other things. Maybe I could get to Tokyo this year. Oh. Maybe it'll happen. We're gonna. We're. We're. I'm hoping. We're hoping we can make it happen. So fingers crossed. Yes. So um, yeah. Uh, and that's all I got. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for having me on the live stream. Uh, I'm gonna go eat. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank right. you for staying up. Thank you for staying up. Uh, cool. And that concludes our live stream for today. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember you, to everyone. follow us on. Uh, at Gigabash Game at Twitter and all our various uh, social media channels. Uh, stay tuned, we have a lot more exciting stuff coming up. Yeah, we're working on it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and cool. see you again, guys. See you again. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. -bye. bye, -bye.